Lakaya Chikshina Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Vajaridini Vrsesa Sunyavari Pastyatyare Satarine Anchakalpa Tarubis Chakripa Sindhu Pavicha Nitanam Bhavne Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Ramaha Nivaiti Krishna Chaitanya Tananda Sri Advaita Gada Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we are approaching the month of Damodar, which is the month by which we worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his form as a baby. It was known as Damodara. Damo means rope and Dara uh, means uh, around the belly to bind. So it's a very sweet manifestation of Krishna's personality when he performed, when he performed appears in his form as a little child dependent on his mother and performs all kinds of activities that are of the nature of a naughty child. <laughs> uh, this naughty childness you find even in the material world. And uh, we're not talking about a spoiled child, we're talking about a naughty child. There's a difference. A naughty child is an in the past, Prabhupada said, naughty child indicates intelligence. <laughs> this is a statement from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, in other words, mm, there are children who are have more developed intelligence at a very early age and probably due to their last lives. <clears throat> and they appear in a family and they they get mischievous, they get naughty, like that. Sometimes we call them the little rascals. So Krishna exhibited that quality. And that quality is found in the, the, in the jivas also in the material world, because when you understand that the soul is part and parcel of Krishna. So whatever you find in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in the sense of some acceptableness, Nothing, not, nothing that is sinful, you find that in the jiva also. So this naughtiness comes from Krishna, because <laughs> he's the source of all naughtiness. And that was exhibited also in another manifestation of his appearance, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he appeared, he was very, very naughty. Hmm. Uh, his mother and father were concerned that his older brother, Vishwarup, who was a manifestation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Balaram, Ananta Shesh, uh, he became really um, absorbed in studies, and so much so that he took his studies beyond just a normal going to school. And he would take time to uh, associate with Advaita Charya in Shantipur, which is a distance away from his home. And he would particularly go there just to hear from uh, Advaita Charya, ask him questions. He became the student of Advaita Charya. And uh, he became really learned in the scriptures. And at the same time, he had uh, excelled in his schoolwork in normal school. But at one point, he decided not to go along with the normal course of events. His parents were all planning to get him married, but he decided that he was not going to get married. So just after hearing regularly from Advaita Chari, he decided to leave home and took sannyas. And he was never seen by the family or anyone else in that area. Again, we don't hear much about anything about him after. 
They say he took uh, sannyas from Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, who was actually a, uh, in line of the Acharyas. Uh, just maybe, a, yeah, around the time of just before Lord Chaitanya, Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, before Ishwara Puri, before Madhavendra Puri also, around the same time as Madhavendra Puri. And uh, it was gone. Now his, now Lord Chaitanya's mother and father, he was Nimai Pandit at the time. He was just Nimai. He also liked going to school and he also liked learning. And he also liked to hear from Advaita Charya. Not as much, but he liked his regular school very much. And his parents started to think, hmm, he's gonna follow in the footsteps of his brother. He's gonna be very learned. He's not gonna to want to get married. He's gonna leave us. He's gonna disappoint us. What will we do? He's our only child. We lost our first son. All our other children died at childbirth. It was Sachi Mata. She had eight girls that right after they were born, each one of them died. So she had quite a, a, a uh, what's to say, what's the word? A, a uh, devastating motherhood in her early years. Uh, eight children, all born, all girls, all died right after childbirth. And then her oldest son stays from the family for a little while, becomes learned in, in school, in Shastra, and leaves. Now she's seeing the same pattern in her other son, who is me, my pundit, Lord Chaitanya. She's thinking we have to change the course of events so he doesn't follow. So they took him out of school. And... Uh, he loved school. He wanted to go to school, but his parents took him out of school. And there, and therefore, even the neighbors were saying, our children, we have to force them to go to school. And you're taking your son to go out of school, and he loves to go to school. Why? <laughs> even the neighbors could not understand. But their motivation was they didn't want him to become educated so, so much that he would leave home, take sannyas, and uh, leave the family. And that was his mother's greatest fear. And she carried that for many, many years. So now, Lord Chaitanya, he would uh, think, well, now I can't go to school, so let me play. <laughs> so he would gather his friends. And he was like Krishna in another way. He was very, very mischievous. So one of the things that he would like to do, actually, this was even beaten before while he was still in school. This is just before his mother took him out of school. He was still, he was even naughty at that time. But when he was taken out of school, he was really naughty. I'll describe some of the events that Lord Chaitanya used to engage in. Now you have to understand the Supreme Personality of God is not naughty just for the sake of being naughty. He's doing it to teach. He teaches those people who come in contact with him about deep philosophical and spiritual uh, subject matters or principles that they should follow and learn from by in his naughtiness. So there was a class of Brahmanas and they were smart the Brahmanas Smarta means more like ritualistic Brahmanas. They were Brahmins by birth. They had uh, performed the, the different samskaras and had attained some status as Brahmanas. But they weren't devotees. They were just paid Brahmanas. They would go and they, you could hire them and they would do a puja for you. They would do a homa for you. They would do some kind of yagya for you. And uh, depending on the nature of the yagyas, this is still goes on today, um, people would pay them. 
And uh, people would think, oh, we are blessed. We got this yagya done by these brahmanas, and brahmanas are the best. But they were making a business out of it. And so Lord Chaitanya, he came to teach that a brahman means one who who teaches Krishna consciousness or teaches philosophical knowledge out of the scriptures for the benefit of the human society. Now, these ritualistic Brahmins, they would go, <clears throat> of course, there were many other Brahmins too, but these ones would go to the banks of the <clears throat> Ganges or in the Ghats around the Ganges, not in the Ganges itself, but the Ganges had these little tributaries that were like Ghats, which was also Ganga water. <laughs> And they would take bath. And these were these were huge ponds. They were like lakes. <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya, what he would do is that when these Brahmins would go and they would go into the water, they would wade into the water and they would stand there. Sometimes they would stop and they would face the direction that they were meant to face. And then they would chant the Gayatri Mantra. It mentions you face east. When you chant the Gayatri Mantra in the morning, you, you, you chant, you face east. When you chant the Gayatri Mantra in the afternoon, and you chant face north when you chant the Gayatri Mantra in the evening. So he would come, they would come during the day facing east, looking towards the sun. And he would swim underwater and he would pull out their legs from beneath, underneath them and they would fall in the water and then he would swim away. And then, you know, he would be with his friends, they would laugh. And sometimes he would swim underwater and they would be chanting Gayatri and he would surface with a mouthful of water and he would spit spit the water in their face <laughs> and then he would swim away <laughs> and they would get really angry. Nimai, you're such a rascal. You're going to be punished. And they could never catch him because he was quite fast. <laughs> so he would do this just to say, just to say, just to show them that, you know, your ritualistic <laughs> uh, activities for pecuniary means are not very much appreciated by people who have knowledge of what is a brahmana. And so he would do that. And sometimes the brahmanas would go and the ladies would go and the gat would be, be big enough and the ladies would bathe on one side and the men would bathe on the other side. So he would take the clothes of the ladies and he, and he would switch it with the clothes of the men and put them on the opposite sides. And so when the men would come out, they would see saris and cholis and <laughs> various kinds of women garments. And the women would come out and they couldn't find their clothes. There would be, <laughs> there would be dhotis there. So he would do that. And that was his mischievous nature. And he would do it for his own transcendental pleasure, but he would also do that just uh, to give them a little bit of his mercy. To be teased by the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very, very auspicious for anyone. <laughs> Although they didn't know it, they were getting a lot of benefit. And then there would be a small section of the of the Ganges where the, the ladies, young girls, these were little girls, usually they were about seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old. And they would uh, set up a little uh, altar right on the banks of the Ganga. And they would uh, put a little Shiva Linga there with some tulsis and some uh, some flowers, not not tulsis. I'm sorry, bay leaves and flowers, and they would chant mantras, praying to Lord Shiva for a nice husband. Because that the you, they say you worship Lord Shiva if you want a good husband. Now, he can. That's mentioned also in Shastra. 
And of course, there is a particular way to worship in order to get the benefit of the worship. So the girls would do that. But Nima would come along and he would just take everything off the altar and he would sit on the altar and he would say, now worship me. <laughs> and the girls would get disturbed. What are you doing, Nimai? You're offending Lord Shiva. And uh, Lord Chaitanya would say, offending Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva is actually my devotee. <laughs> and then they would, they would say, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. He's, he's speaking blasphemy. Listen to him. He's supposed to be a son of a Brahmana. And listen to him. He's speaking such nonsense, offensiveness. And so they would get disturbed. And then he would say to the girls, you're worshiping for a nice husband. But if you worship me, I will guarantee you, you have, you'll get a very qualified husband and you'll have seven boys and they'll all be very intelligent. And you'll get a very handsome, qualified, intelligent husband and so many nice children. Worship me. <laughs> and they would say, Nimai, Nimai, what are you doing? And then they would find fault with him in different ways. And then they, he would say to the girls, well, if you don't worship me, then I'll curse you. And uh, my curse will be is that you'll get an old, ugly husband with... Uh, with, with seven co-wives, you'll be one of seven co-wives <laughs> and you will have, you will have, your children will be, uh, you know, not very intelligent. <laughs> and so he would harass them and tease the girls like that. And then they would sometimes think, you know, he's very powerful. He has some, some power. Maybe what he's saying is right. <laughs> so they would get scared and they would worship him like that. So he would perform all kinds of missions. And sometimes the girls would come and then they would wash their hair in the, in the water and then they would come out and then they would take time and they would dry it. And as soon as they would dry it, he would sneak up a, upon behind the girls and he would throw these sticky okada. Uh, ok O, okada seeds, they call them okada seed, O K A D A, okada seed. And they'd be sticky and gooey, and he'd put it in the hair of the girls. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then he would run away, and they would get angry. We just washed our hair, and now you're throwing all these seeds. <laughs> So this was this was Lord Chaitanya. So you'd think Krishna was na naughty. Lord Chaitanya was even more naughty. And so the Brahmanas, sometimes they would get really angry and they get they get together and they say, Look, we should go to Jagannath Mishra and tell him what his son is doing that way and explain that he should punish him. So they all got together. One day they were going to do that. Now, Nimai had just, uh, you know, he would, he would be going to school at that time. This is before his parents took him out of school. And uh, so his friends would run up to him and say, Nimai, Nimai, the Brahmins are going to your father and they're going to complain about you. Be careful when you go home, you're going to get punished. So Nimai would think, hmm, or Chaitanya would think. So what he would do is that he'd go down to the place and he rubbed all uh, uh, dirt on his pants and he would put ink on his hands <laughs> and then he would go home. And his father would be really stern waiting for him to come home and then ready to chastise him and punish him. And then what he would begin, and he might say, father, they're lying. I'm just coming back from school. You can see, I didn't even go to the GAT today. And he would have his pants would be all dry and they'd have dust on it. And he'd have, he would have ink on his hands. Just see, Father. <laughs> his father would get confused and didn't know who to believe. <laughs> so Nimai was very intelligent. 
so he would avoid punishment like that. So this went on. And of course, later on, as we mentioned, his father parents decided to take him out of school. And that's when the mischief is really, really accelerated. You know, the, in India, you know that there is uh, like, they have these uh, bathrooms that are not attached to people's houses. You know, it's actually civilized to have your uh, bathroom. We call it a bathroom, but it's actually a place where you uh, take care of nature. A bathroom is a separate place. You, you don't bathe and you, and you have the toilet in the same room. <laughs> That's considered very, very uh, moochy, dirty, uncivilized to have the toilet and the bathtub the place where you wash and in the same room. Of course, now modern day bathrooms, that's all you get. Of course, there's a few, there's a few bathrooms I've seen where they have that separated, the toilet is separate and then the, the bath is separated also like that. Well, and then that is a civilized place. But in India and in the culture, it was that, you know, the, the outhouse was separate. And people would bathe to the, they would go outside and bathe. They would go to the water pumps, pump water into a bucket and take a bath outside, even in the winter time. So what would Nimai would do when he would see the people going into the outhouses to, to take care of nature, you know that in India, they have locks on the inside and they have locks on the outside of the doors. So when they would go in, he would lock the door from the outside and run away. <laughs> and they would bang on the door, let us out, let us out. <laughs> Somebody would come after some time and let him out. So he would do that. And then another thing he would do is that, you know, the, the farmers, especially in certain fields, they would put up these things called scarecrows to scare away the crows from eating the eating the harvest so they would make these sticks with a big ugly looking dummy on there and that would keep the crows away so what would Nimai and his friends would do they would take away the dummy and they would they would take a blanket and put it over their head and they would knock down all of the crops in the field and people would get disturbed and they would and people would think there's a bull running a while in my field and he's not he's destroying their crop my crops and they would come out and start yelling and chasing thinking it was a bull when it was Nimai and his friends with a, with a blanket over their head knocking down everything <laughs> so, so you <laughs> At one time, he said to his mother, this when he was really young, he said, mother, mother, uh, please give me the moon. So she was very smart. So she, uh, she took a mirror and she caught the reflection in the moon in the mirror. And she handed him the mirror and said, now you have the moon. And he said, oh, thank you very much, mother. Right around the same time, he said to his mother, she was going to one deity she was worshiping. I forgot one expansion of Mother Durga. She was worshiping every Chandi Das. Maybe it was Chandi or one of the manifestations of Mother Durga. She would offer sweets to this deity. So Lord Chaitanya said, Mother, don't take those sweets. Give me those sweets. I want those. No, she would say. These sweets are for Chandi Dasi. You, you, you know, you have your own food. And he would say, no, no, give it to me. She would not give it to him. And he would get really angry and she would get sometimes scared. So she would give him the sweets. So one time she had already offered the sweets and she came back and he asked for the sweets. And she said, well, I already offered it. And he said, I want the sweets. And she said, there's nothing. So he ran into the house, took a stick, 
start breaking everything in the house, knocking over the butter pots and then the rice pots, the other pots, just smashing everything, hitting the windows, what was something like a window that they had in their houses. He was knocking, he was just breaking everything. He, he threw everything in the house. And after he was done, he went to sleep. <laughs> And so, and then he came out a little bit later and he said, mother, I'm hungry. She so said, well, son, there's nothing because you destroyed all the food. <laughs> he said, oh, okay, in that case. So then he left, he said, I'll be right back. And he went away and he came back with two tolas of gold. And he said, here, mother, you can take this gold and now you can purchase some food. And she she took it and then she would think, where is he getting this gold from? <laughs> I don't know where he goes to get this gold. So these are some of the mischievous pastimes that the Lord would perform. So, um, and that would endear the devotees to Lord Chaitanya, to Krishna even more. So this mischievous, mischievous nature when you see it in an ordinary child, it becomes a disturbance and people try to stop it or punish the child in some way. But when it's in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it's a source of great happiness and it's actually a way to worship the Lord by hearing about his wonderful pastimes as he creates mischief in the lives of his parts and parcels, his friends. His, the, his mother, his, friend, his family, or and people in general. And that was Lord Chaitanya, that is Lord Krishna. So when Krishna steals butter and breaks the butter pot and then lies saying he didn't do it, <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually a beautiful expression of the Lord's nature to give happiness to his uh, all living entities. <laughs> Okay, so these are something a little bit to uh, think about the Lord's mischievous nature. We'll be hearing more about that as we get close to the month of Damodar. And then every day we hear, we sing the song, Namami Shoram Sajid Ananda Rupam, that beautiful, beautiful song which describes Krishna stealing butter, being tied up by his mother to a grinding war, becoming unhappy with being tied up and knocking down the two Arjun trees, which were the places where two very powerful demigods, Nalakuvera and Manigriva, were cursed to take birth by Sri Narada Muni. And that's a wonderful pastime. And he freed them from that curse and blessed them and then they went back to their realm in the heavenly planets. <laughs> and of course, knocking down these two gigantic Arjuna trees, what commotion that caused in Vrindavan. The residents of Vrindavan were thinking some cyclone had come and knocked the trees down, but there was no sign of any cyclone. And others were thinking it must have been a demon that did it. But there was no there was no trace of any demon coming. So Krishna would always bewilder the the inhabitants of Vrindavan with his with his pastimes, which would make the pastimes more and more interesting, exciting, and endearing to everyone. Krishna as an ordinary child performing mischievous activities for the pleasure of himself and for the pleasure of his devotees. So I felt very mischievous today, so I decided to speak about that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much <laughs> for <explaining> such nice, <laughs> sweet pastimes of naughty Nima. <laughs> it's a good start of 
preparation of damodar month <laughs> or i should say kartik damodar month <laughs> yeah that's the whole past time is krishna in his mischievous nature <laughs> and being a mother of uh, krishna in any past time is not easy job <laughs> no no his mother was always like how do i control this boy <laughs> we give him everything and still he's mischievous <laughs> true guru maharaj yeah and then he would lie about it too <laughs> he would say people are lying about me <laughs> he would eat dirt and then uh Balaram would go to his mother and complain that he's eating dirt and his mother would say you know you're eating dirt you get sick she he would say no balaram's not telling the truth he's lying <laughs> she would say open your mouth i want to see so he would open she would he would open his mouth and she would be looking for dirt but all she see is so with the entire cosmic creation <laughs> with all the planets stars galaxies and she also saw herself looking into the mouth of krishna within the mouth of krishna <laughs> yes yeah, so and krishna performing his combination of his aishwarya and his madhurya pastimes simultaneously okay so thank you very much i don't know if you want to ask any questions or comments but we're here that's the that's the guru maharaj hari krishna dear devotees if you have any questions comments or realization uh, please do unmute yourself i'm sure there will be lots of today hari krishna Shri Devi, Devi Mataji, yeah. Shri Devi Mataji, he raised the hand. Mataji, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Thank you for being in the naughty mood and sharing Krishna's wonderful naughty pastimes. It was really enchanting for me to hear these pastimes from you and your glorious laughter. I think I was more enchanted by your laughter <laughs> at Krishna's pastimes. I wanted it to go on and on. Well, I just wanted to say, Guru Maharaj, that these beautiful pastimes of naughty baby Krishna have been sung and uh, enacted and uh, put to dance for many, many um, centuries now in India, especially as small children, you know, we were all taught okay now you're going to be mother yashoda and now you're going to be baby krishna and you're going to do this and dance dramas and songs about these pastimes they're just glorified over and over again in so many different households in so many different languages and this is how you know people gain great pleasure just watching the dance drama and seeing the pastimes of the lord as a naughty little child and so i just wanted to say that you know this is what children at least when i was growing up you know this is how uh, the lord's pastimes are enacted and and there are dance dramas and all about baby krishna being very naughty and everyone is enchanted when this is enacted on stage so i was remembering that i just wanted to say that thank you yeah thank you when the children grow up in the right way they they hear about krishna's pastimes <laughs> instead of hearing about Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and whatever <laughs> else is going, whatever else is there. Uh, what's yeah, his name? Bhima, Bhima and Butthead. What is what is it called? Bhishma and Butthead or something. Oh my it's, gosh! I, I don't even all know. Kind of cra crazy, you know. You know what's some of the others? You know, it's all these fairy tales with these stupid characters. They have no meaning. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So now that's real culture and that's education, educating children through entertainment. 
because the best way you entertain young children is through entertainment. Okay. You can't sit them down and expect them to sit there and learn what you're trying to teach them. You teach mm -hmm. that through, through entertainment and let them have a nice experience. And mm -hmm. then they remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We didn't have television and all those things. Growing up, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, what to say, that was playtime. Playtime was doing all kinds of different dance dramas, especially summer vacation, and then practicing, and then going out on costume hunting, you know, finding all the costumes and making the flute and doing the, I mean, it was a whole thing, you know, all our time was spent doing all those kind of things. There was no question of video games or television or, well, you know, cell phone. I mean, there was just none of those things. We just didn't have very much, but uh, it was such an enjoyable time. I still remember how we all of us little kids would dress up and do all those different dance dramas and things like that. It was really wonderful. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada wanted that to happen in our society. He wanted us to educate the children like that. Mm -hmm. and, and also to make dolls of, of deities like Jagannath and, you know, Krishna, and the little dolls that the kids can play with that are, you know, forms of the Supreme Lord. That I, I'm very sure lots and lots of our kids have because now there are so many uh, people making those soft toys and giving, uh, making sure that kids have them. I've seen that in a lot of our devotee homes that children have those deities, personal deities like that to worship and fall in love with. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have to go back to what is actually beneficial. Right. What, what is actually spiritual. Raising children is not easy. <laughs> if we expose them to the secular society, and then they develop bad habits mm -hmm. because they want to be like their peers. Unless they're really, really advanced children, usually they become influenced by the, their association. Mm. They think it's okay. Mm -hmm. And then the parents had, and then the parents are devotees and the kids are coming from devotee families. So when they come home from school, the parents they come they they tell their parents about all of the, the nonsense they're learning. The parents get upset, trying to teach them the right way. And the kids get confused. Mm. Right. They need to have that supportive atmosphere and they need to have like-minded other I mean families so that they can do things like that together rather than having to contend with this outside secular world and the children coming from all kinds of families and they bring all kinds of food to the school and I mean it's just very sad you know our devotee children really need to be protected so much because they're so special. Yeah Prabhu said they're very special they've been sent he said that mo many of them have had krishna consciousness in previous births they are now coming in to finish up their remaining karma and then go back to the godhead so you can see many of these children are very advanced the ones that are mm -hmm. born in devotee families mm -hmm. right they're more intelligent right. even when they go to school they excel amongst their classmates. They're always the best in the class. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, Prabhupada, yeah. Prabhupada said, you know, that's why he established these guru calls. He says, these are the, you know, we, have to, we can teach secular education, but at the same time, we have to give spiritual knowledge, spiritual direction and spiritual activities as part of the, the, the growing up process. Yes, and this is a very, very, very important because even Indians are losing 
the culture. Indians are losing the tradition. Indians are losing, especially those who come out of India and are in other countries and things like that. Guru Maharaj is just like fading away. I mean, it's just scary to me to watch what is happening around the world, like with, uh, you know, basic things that Indians, I mean, eating with the left hand, you know, it's become a fashion. You would be mortified to be caught with anything in your left hand, you know, growing up in India. It would be like, oh my God, what are you doing? You're touching food with your left hand. But now it seems like, you know, some polished, fashionable thing to put a little bit in your right hand and you put a little bit in your left hand and eat from both hands. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Indians today, it's like, oh, it's uh, really, there's a great, great need for Krishna. Well, yeah, it's, all it's, over the world. All over the world is, you know, real cultures being, you know, challenged by, by demoniac culture. De demons don't have any culture. It's just very crude way of, of living. Yeah, so it's important that we educate kids at home, and in the proper you know, scholastic arenas. That's why Prabhupada wanted these guru cools. Like in America, for instance, and I think now in so many European countries, you can educate your children at home. You don't have to send them to these public schools. And I know many families that are doing that, especially in America. And the kids are growing up with good behavior and I mean, it was, it's hard work for the, for the parents. And the parents have to spend, the mother has to spend practically most of the day with the child. She becomes the teacher. But, but I've, seen, I've seen the results. The results are, you know, we get, it's the investment is worth it. I mean, if you're going to have children, as the scriptures say, in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, don't become a mother, don't become a father, don't become a guru, don't become a teacher, unless you can deliver your students, disciples from the cycle of birth and death. It becomes a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. So part of that, and a big part of that, is giving them proper direction in the early part of their life because that's the foundation for what will happen the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. What they learn in the early years is planting seeds towards how, how they will develop later on in life. Yes, Guru Maharaj, absolutely. Because as you were speaking, I was thinking of Arudha Mataji who completely devoted her time to bringing up her two sons in Krishna consciousness because she was so horrified at what they were learning in secular school. And today, I think Radhika Raman, and I don't know her other son's name, but them are- Gopal, uh, Gopal Hari. Uh-huh. And they're both like uh, professors and PhDs and teaching in universities and at a very young age, they, they had all these accolades and all these qualifications, and now they are very well established uh, teachers, uh, professors in some university, and you know. Well, that that's that's secondary. It's that they they have wonderful characters. Mm. I know Gopal Hari. And I've seen him a couple of times. He's here in Chicago. I'm in Chicago now. He's here now. And uh, the guy, he's just a, a perfect gentleman, intelligent gentleman, all good qualities, mm -hmm. all good qualities. And that's the thing. It's the character we're talking about. The education is secondary, but right. that, helps, right. that helps to build the character, though. Mm -hmm. Right. And they were taught completely from Srila Prabhupada's books. Um, his elder son in some interviews said, you know, we learned everything from our mother through Srila Prabhupada's books and we learned all that we needed, even for higher education, for critical thinking, for, uh, I mean, whatever they're tested on these days, I don't even know what they are. But basically, he was trying to say that everything they were taught was taught by Srila Prabhupada, from Srila Prabhupada's books. Yeah. yeah. Both of them are geniuses. <laughs> 
So there's really. But, but that's one example. There are many. There are other. Mm -hmm. There are other. There are other uh, parents that are also schooling their children. I know a wonderful family in Richmond, Virginia. They have two kids, and they're schooling them. Kids are great. And then when they get grown up, they can go to the you know the universities. And then they're really they're already established nicely in education and in proper culture and in Krishna consciousness. And when they go to the universities, they excel. Mm -hmm. And they're not influenced by the secular society. They're not influenced in the wrong way, that is. It is uh, my sincere hope that when I uh, finally get to Mayapur, I will be able to be like a grandmother to many little ones and teach them all that I learned in childhood and teach them songs and dances and dramas and, and help them to, you know, learn all those things. And that would nice, be a nice service. Plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I will. I feel very much strongly that our children are so precious and they need to, you know, really be guided in all these things so that they grow up with nice family traditions and learn the real thing and enjoy themselves, have fun in the process. Instead of depending on all these gadgets and having all sorts of health issues after that. That's just uh, hard to there's a secular statistics that they test certain children to see what is their IQ capacity at an early age. So 97% of the children that they tested had very, in other words, the children that they tested, they understood that many of these children, you know, had great potentials for learning. After going to school for about 10 years, their quality, all of their knowledge, all of their abilities dropped. Their intelli the intelligence ability went down. And Bhakti you know that course, yes. Um, modern day education, they're slaughterhouses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They slaughter the good qualities of the, of the living being. You learn how to get a job. That's all you do. Right. And even, even that doesn't happen a lot of times. <laughs> right. Even after all that, <laughs> and then even after you get the job, then there's all the other things that competition, rivalry, envy, jealousy, this thing, that thing. It's like dog eat dog world, basically. That's what we are coming to. So it's not like it's this education. This, this is a big, very big part of Prabhupada's movement is educating the young. And both in character and in spiritual knowledge. Arch in the city, she has two very sweet boys that she homeschooled for many years. Hari and uh, Dhruva, really nice boys, intelligent, very uh, respectful to adults. That's where you don't see children nowadays. They have no respect for elderly people. And that's all because of the type of education and the type of environment they grow in. <clears throat> yes, Guru Maharaj, there's lots of, lots and lots and lots of seva to do, lots. So my prayer is that I'll get my health back and be able to do something. Good, good. I also pray that you get your health back and do something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Okay, thank you, devotees. My obeisances to everyone. Panchakalpa Tarubis Cha, Kripa Sindhu, Kripa Cha, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.